Hello and welcome to this tutorial on root motion animations. I'm going to show you how to get animations from Mixamo that actually move the character's root component and how to set this up so that we can use these in Unreal Engine. We're going to be converting these meshes into meshes that have root bones using a Blender add-on. So the process will be nice and quick and easy. So let's get started. This video is made possible by the following patrons. I'd like to give a shout out to new patrons Andrew, Dasha Yang, Risky, Tim, Jerry Walker, Beacon, George Comby, Daniel Williams, and B. Welcome aboard and thank you all for your support. And if you'd like early access to my new Unreal Engine 5 C++ course, the Ultimate Game Developer course, you can access that from Patreon as well. And you can learn how to create an action RPG style open world game, complete with Dark Souls or Elden Ring style combat mechanics, experience points in the form of souls, gold and treasure, breakable objects, multiple types of enemies, and you'll learn all about Unreal Engine's new features such as open world, animation blueprint templates, linked anim graphs, meta sounds, root motion animations with motion warping, advanced combat mechanics, multiple weapons, equipping and unequipping, and we'll create our own visual effects in Niagara. So tons of new content. If you'd like to start this course now before it's even released on Udemy, join my Patreon and you'll get access to the videos as I finish uploading them. So I've created a brand new Unreal Engine 5 project, and it's got me open to this open world level. So really nothing in here, just an empty content folder. And I'm going to need a character mesh and a couple of animations. So I've logged into Mixamo, and I'm just going to download one of these meshes. This particular paladin mesh has a sword and shield, so I'm just going to pick this one. There are two versions. I'm getting the one with prop and that's the sword and shield there included in the skeletal mesh. So I'm going to go ahead and download this and leave it as FBX binary in the T pose. So let's download that and I'm going to need an animation. So I'm going to go to the animations and search for idle and just find an idle animation to use. So here's one. This will work just fine. So I'm going to download this and I'm going to get it without skin. So downloading an idle and I'd like a root motion animation, one that actually moves the mesh of the character. So I'm going to search for attack. So here's one that actually moves the mesh of the character. I'll go ahead and pick this one. So I'm going to download that without skin, selecting download. Now I'm going to show you what happens if we get one of those root motion animations and try to use it here in Unreal Engine. So I'm just going to make a basic character. I'll stick it right here in the content folder. So I'm going to make a new blueprint based on the character class. I'm going to call this BP Paladin, and I'm going to need a mesh for this. So let's get that mesh and those animations in here. So here's my downloads folder, and here's my Paladin with prop. I'm just going to drag it in here, and I'm going to leave all of these settings as is and click import all. Now I get the no smoothing group warning. I can close that. It's not a big deal. And here are the files. Now to keep this organized, I can make a new folder called Paladin and move all these new files into it. And in Paladin, I can move all the materials to their respective folder. So new folder, I'm going to call it materials and move the material and its textures into that new folder. And I now have this Paladin skeletal mesh. And if I open it, it looks good. But notice it doesn't have a root bone. It has a hips bone at the top of the hierarchy. And it's right here in the center of the mesh. And this is why we can't use root motion animations. And I'm going to show you what happens if we try to use the animation that actually moves the mesh. Let's get those animations in here. So in my palette and folder, I'll go ahead and make a new folder called animations. And I'll open that. And I'm going to bring my two animations in the sword and shield attack and sword and shield idle. I'm just going to drag them in and I can select my palette and skeleton here for the skeleton and import all. Now opening these animations, my idle should be fine. It just stands there. It's not actually moving the mesh. But if I take a look at the sword and shield attack, I see that it actually is moving my character. Specifically, it's moving that hips bone. Now because there is no root bone, I can't use root motion. 
I can go down to the root motion section and check enable root motion and then I see all kinds of problems. The character doesn't look right. It's kind of locked to the location of the hips bone and this is going to look really funny if we try to use it. So let's see what happens if we try to use it. Here in the animations folder I'll make a basic animation blueprint. So right click animation animation blueprint and I'll select my paladin skeleton and click create and call this ABP paladin. Now opening this I can have the most basic animation blueprint possible. I'm just going to drag in my idle animation and create a slot here. So drag off type slot and get that default slot and this will allow me to play an animation montage using the default slot. And I'm going to make a basic animation montage. So I'm going to compile and save this and right click, go to animation, animation montage, choosing my palette and skeleton and I'll call this AM attack for animation montage attack. Now I'm going to open this and drag in my sword and shield attack right there. And if I play this, I'll see that it's moving my character's mesh and then the character goes back to the initial position. So let's see what happens when we play this montage. So I'll go to my Paladin blueprint back in my Paladin folder. In fact, it's out in my content folder, but I'll move it into Paladin here. And in my BP Paladin, I can select a mesh. So for the skeletal mesh, I'll choose my Paladin with prop and rotate it by 90 degrees and move it down. And with my mesh selected, I can choose my animation blueprint for the anim class, ABP Paladin. So now it's in the idle pose. Now I'd like to play that montage and I can just go to my event graph here, right click and type left mouse button. And with this node, whenever I click my left mouse button, I can do something such as play a montage. So to play a montage, I need to get my mesh and from the mesh, I can get the anim instance. So I'm going to type anim instance and use get anim instance here. And from this, I can play a montage. So dragging off of this, I'm going to type montage play, get a node for that, hook it up to pressed. And for montage to play, I'm just going to choose my AM attack. So we should just see our attack montage played. So let's see how this works. So here in this open world map, if I go to world settings, I see there's no game mode override. So I can simply drag in my paladin here and select it and in the details panel go to auto possess player and change that to player zero so that I can possess this by default. Now I don't have a camera or spring arm so I can go ahead and just quickly add a camera and spring arm to my character. So selecting the capsule I'm going to add a spring arm component and with the spring arm selected I'll add a camera. Now that we have a camera I can come back press play and there's my character. And if I left click, I'm playing that montage. And then I come right back to my initial location. And if I hit tilde and enter the console command show collision, I see my capsule. And if I left click, the capsule stays behind. That's why my mesh comes right back to the capsule's location. The animation is not using root motion. It's not going to change my capsule's position. It's just going to play the animation and bring that mesh back. So for that reason, we need to be able to use root motion. Now for an animation that can use root motion, we would go into the animation itself. Here's my sword and shield attack and check enable root motion here. But because there's no root bone in this skeleton, this isn't going to work. If I press play, you'll see that we're trying to use root motion and things are out of whack, right? We end up with a strange roll for our camera and even though the capsule is moving, things are getting worse and worse as we play the animation. So to properly use root motion, we need a root bone. So that brings us to a handy plugin for Blender that we can use to add a root bone to our Mixamo skeletons. So here's the plugin. A link will be in the description for this video. You just need to go to this link. There are some instructions, but I'll show you how to use it. You're going to click the green drop down that says code and download this as a zip file. 
Once you download it, you should have it in your downloads folder. Now, you don't even need to extract this. Just leave it as a zip file, and then you're going to open Blender. Now, Blender is free, and if you don't have it, I'll have a link in the description for downloading Blender as well. It's a very small, lightweight program and extremely powerful. Now, you can click on the splash screen to get rid of it. We can get rid of all the objects in the world. There are three of them by left-clicking and dragging to box select them and hitting the delete key. Now we need to enable the Blender add-on by going to Edit and Preferences. Now here in Preferences, we can select Add-ons. And if you click on Install, you can choose a location where you have your Mixamo add-on. So if it's in your Downloads folder, you're gonna choose that zip file and click Install Add-on. Now as soon as you've done that, you should be able to search here for Mixamo and check the checkbox to enable your Mixamo converter add-on. Once you've done that, you can close that Blender Preferences window. And up here to the right, there's a little arrow to expand this side menu. Also, the N key will show and hide it. And you should see your Mixamo tab here. This is that Mixamo add-on. Now the way this works is you have an input path and an output path, and you select folders that you have on your machine for these. So here's my Unreal Engine project. There's all the associated files. Just outside of that, I'm gonna make two folders, an input and an output path for this conversion process. So I'm gonna right click, make a new folder, and call this input path. And I'll make another folder called output path. Now the input path is going to have the animation assets that we want to convert into animations that have a root bone. So here in the input path, we're gonna drag in those new assets we've downloaded. So here's my downloads folder again. I'm gonna go ahead and select my skeletal mesh and my two animations, and I'm gonna drag them into input path. Now they exist here. And I just need to set these paths up here in Blender for my add-on. So for input path, I'm gonna click the folder and find my project file. Here it is. I'm gonna select my input path and click Accept. And then for the output path, I'm gonna find my project again and select that output path and click Accept. Now, before we convert these things, there's just a couple of settings that I like to set on this to make it work better. For one, I like to unselect Transfer Rotation. Make sure that's gray and not blue. And then I click on the Advanced Options and right here, this checkbox for Apply Rotation, I like to uncheck that. I get the best results with that unchecked. And then I click Batch Convert. Now, once it's done, it'll turn gray again, just like that. And now I can look in my output path and see that I have these files here. So now I need to get these into my Unreal Engine project. Now, I already have these assets here for my skeletal mesh that has no root bone. I'm gonna make a new folder just next to my Paladin, and I'm gonna call this Paladin underscore root bone. And I'm going to open that up and get in my Paladin skeletal mesh first. So I'll drag that in and click import all. And it didn't import my material, but that's okay because I can double click my Paladin and select the material. But before I do, notice it now has a root bone and it's right there between the two feet. And the hips bone is attached to the root bone. Now we can use root motion animations with this skeletal mesh. Now for the material, let's go to Asset Details, and here's the material assigned. I'm going to go ahead and expand that dropdown and select the other material that I had when I first imported the skeletal mesh. So now we have a material, and this skeleton has a root bone. And we can also get those converted animations in here as well. So I don't need this white paladin material. I'll go ahead and delete that. And I'll make a new folder here called Animations and open that and get my two animations in here, Attack and Idle. Now for these, I need to select my skeleton that has a root bone. That's this one. If I hover over it, it shows the path and it's in my Paladin root bone folder. I have to select this skeleton, not the one that does not have a root bone. So my new skeleton. Now I can uncheck Import Mesh as I don't need a mesh for this and click Import All. And here are my two new animations. I have my idle, using my skeleton with a root bone, and I have my sword and shield attack. Now this one 
can use root motion. If I go to asset details and scroll down to the root motion section, if I check enable root motion, notice that my character stops moving forward. This is what we want to see when we check enable root motion. And notice it still looks natural. It isn't locked to the hips bone. Everything looks correct. It's just not moving forward like it does when we uncheck enable root motion. So this means we can use root motion now. Now to use root motion in a montage, we have to create a new montage and add this new animation to it as we have a completely different skeleton here. So here in my animations folder in Paladin Rootbone, I'm gonna make a new animation montage choosing my new skeleton, the one with the root bone. And I'll call this RM for root motion underscore attack. And I'll go ahead and double click this and add in my sword and shield attack animation here. And I can make sure that root motion is enabled for this sword and shield attack. And I see that it is if I double click on it. So now we have a montage using root motion. So now that I have the skeletal mesh and associated animations that I want to use, I'm gonna rename the old ones so I know which ones are which. So I'll go into my Paladin folder and rename this skeletal mesh to Paladin underscore no root. And for the physics asset, I'm gonna call it PA underscore Paladin no root. And for the skeleton, I'll call this SK underscore Paladin no root. Now the materials are all materials that I'm now using with my new Paladin. So I'm gonna drag that into Paladin Root Bone and click Move here. And I'd now like to use my Paladin with the Root Bone for my character blueprint. So I'm gonna move my character into Paladin Root Bone as well. And now I can rename this old folder Paladin No Root. So my Paladin Root Bone is what I wanna use now. So I'm gonna open my BP Paladin here and change the mesh to my new one, the one with the root. So I'm gonna select the skeletal mesh and choose my new paladin, and I need a new animation blueprint specifically for this skeleton. So we'll go ahead and make one here. So I'll go ahead and right click, make an animation blueprint, and this time select my skeleton that has the root bone. I'll click create and call this ABP underscore paladin, and I'll go ahead and go into my paladin no root and rename this one to ABP Paladin No Root. That way we know which one is which, and in my character blueprint, I can select the animation blueprint ABP Paladin. Now this one's empty, so I need to add some things to it. So I'm gonna close out of these old assets and go into my new animation blueprint, which by the way, I can stick in my animations folder. So let's open that, and for this one, I'm gonna use my idle animation. This is the one using a root bone, and I can add that slot. So adding the default slot node, now we can play a montage. And back in my character blueprint in the event graph, I now need to select my root motion attack. So selecting that, I can compile and save, and now I can give this a test run. So I see that I'm idling, and if I left click, I'm now using my root motion attack animation, and it's working properly. And I can show collision with the show collision console command. Here's my capsule, and I see that it's moving along with me. Now, one more thing to take note of. If we look at the original animation, this character kind of jumps higher into the air than we're seeing here. We can go back and take a look at it. Sword and shield attack. And if I uncheck enable root motion, I see that he's kind of jumping higher. So how come we're not getting that elevation? Well, the elevation is taken out when we're using root motion, but we can get it back as long as the character is in flying mode when playing the animation. If the character's in flying mode, then its Z location will not be restricted as we're seeing. So we can enable flying mode with some anim notifies. Let's go to our root motion attack montage. And right at the beginning, I'm gonna add a new anim notify. So right click, add notify, new notify, and I'm gonna call this enable flying mode. And I'll make a new notify at the very end, add notify, new notify, and call this disable flying mode. Now, what do I mean by flying mode? Well, if we go to our BP Paladin and select our character movement component and search for movement mode, we'll see that default land movement mode is walking. And if we change this to say flying, then our character will no longer have gravity applied. I can take my character 
and bring it up into the air and press play. And I'll see that I'm sort of hovering here. Now we don't have movement input, but if I were adding movement input, he would be flying throughout the world. Now we don't want this on permanently, we just want flying mode while we're playing that root motion animation. So now that we have these notifies, let's click up here on the animation blueprint icon and in the event graph for our animation blueprint, we'll use those notifies. So we have enable flying mode and disable flying mode. Now to enable and disable flying mode, we're gonna need our character movement component. So I'm just gonna get that at the beginning with blueprint initialize animation and I'll use try get pawn owner here. I'll simply take this cast to BP Paladin and from BP Paladin, we're going to get the character movement component. So get character movement, scrolling down to the bottom, there it is, and I'll promote this to a variable. It can be called character movement, that's fine. And in our notifies, we'll get our character movement, right click, convert this to a validated get, so we only use it if it's valid, and with character movement, we're gonna call set movement mode. And for enable flying mode, we're gonna change movement mode to flying. And for disable flying mode, we're gonna copy these nodes and set the movement mode back to walking here and compile and save. So now we'll have flying mode enabled while we're playing this animation. And we do need to go back to the animation itself and make sure that enable root motion is checked. Now we can go ahead and press play, and if we left click, now we're flying up in the air at the same height as the animation itself. And we can show collision as well and see our capsule moving. So that's how we can properly use root motion in our animations, as long as our character has a root bone. So that Blender plugin is really useful because we can batch convert multiple animations at the same time. And as long as one of these FBXs has the skin, the mesh with the skeleton, then the animations themselves don't really need skin. So when we download it from Mixamo, we can choose without skin as long as one of these FBXs does have the skeletal mesh and the skeleton inside of it. So that's going to conclude this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. And if you'd like the project files, go ahead and join my Patreon, and you'll get this project file with these converted meshes and animations. And if you'd like early access to the Unreal Engine 5 Ultimate Game Developer course, you can join Patreon and get access to that as well. So thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.